I have played with a lot of art supplies this year, so let's talk about some of my favorites. This video is not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here, also known as Caution Artist at Play because I love to play with a whole lot of art supplies and I did a lot of that in 2024. So today we are going to be talking about my top 10 favorite art supplies of 2024. Now some of these things are things that I have had for a while and they continue to be favorites of mine for years and years and years and some of them are new supplies that I have tried this year. And there's a full range here. We have stuff from the graphite category, from the pencil category, from the paint category. It's a whole lot of fun. It's a whole lot of supplies. So let's just get down to it. Counting down from number 10, I have Ohuhu markers. And these are the Honolulu Ohuhu markers. I have a 48 set of their pastel and a 120 set of various colors. And I like the ones that have the nice bullet nib and brush nib combo because I like to be able to get that fine detail with the bullet nib and I find that the brush nib is flexible and really versatile because I can get larger areas or finer areas if I want to. Now I am somebody who has just really started getting back into alcohol markers because I don't like the fact that they fade so easily, but I have been working in sketchbooks more often and that has me craving some fun, more blendable items and alcohol markers are right up that alley. I still don't use them in work that I plan to sell, but I do like them for sketchbook pieces and works that I plan to sell prints of. I find that these are beautiful and vibrant and easy to blend. I really like the variety that Ohuhu has put out, so I will be definitely using these more in the coming year, which is why I included them on this list. I love them for illustrative work, and you can see that here with my 90s nostalgia illustration. I just love it. Okay, so number nine, we're going into the natural acrylic paints. Now, these are by Natural Earth Paint. It's a company that seeks to put out eco-friendly art supplies. These are a plant-based acrylic paint alternative. And so these are supposed to be extremely eco-friendly because you're not going to be putting any microplastics in the waterways. They're supposed to be healthier for you to work with as well. Takes out a lot of the poisons that traditional acrylic paints have. And they work with natural pigments, so they are all extremely light fast. And I was pretty impressed with how they worked. I was not sure how they would feel, but they felt pretty close to a traditional acrylic paint. These are advertised as heavy body, but they felt closer to a medium body paint to me. Somewhere around like a Liquitex Basics or De La Rowney System 3, which is the range that I really like to work in. I'm not huge on heavy body to begin with. And I'd say they dried about average on the palette. I'd say they dried a little bit quicker than a regular medium bodied paint, but a little bit slower than a regular heavy body paint, somewhere in the middle. Though I must say they did not stay wet as well in my stay wet palette. I have some paint that I've been using for a few weeks now. My regular acrylics are still nice and wet in my stay wet palette, but these are not. But overall, I was really impressed. They do plan on coming out with more colors. I will link their website in the description below so you can get more info. So number eight is going to be my Ink Tense blocks. Now, Ink Tense is one of my all time favorite supplies in the world, but I wanted to highlight the blocks specifically because I played with these a little bit more this year. I tend to go more towards the pencils. Now, if you are not familiar with Ink Tense, they are a water soluble medium that wash out to an ink like consistency. They have pencils, they have pants, they have blocks. And I really love the blocks because they are super versatile. I use them like a watercolor pan a lot of times. And then I also like to come in with a block to create a lot of texture and to cover larger areas. I most often use these in conjunction with my pencils, but they can be used on their own as well. There's a lot that can be done with them. They're vibrant and beautiful and just an all around fun product to play with. So I highly recommend trying the blocks if you haven't already. And I think Ink Tense will always be on my list <laughs> in some form or another. So while this is not new to me this year, it is still beloved and I kind of fell back in love with it this year. 
I personally love them most for building up various textures, as you can see here in this rock drawing. Number seven is the Koh-i-Noor Mondaluz watercolor pencils. Now, if you've been following me this year, you know I've been playing around with watercolor pencils a lot, and this one was the least expensive that I've played around with, and I am just super impressed for the price point. They are vibrant, they are beautiful, they have about an average light fast rating across the board. If you compare them with something like a Derwent watercolor pencil, not to be confused with the ink tents. They come out above in most ways. They're more light fast. They're a little bit more vibrant. You can layer them really well. They're just a beautiful pencil and super inexpensive. They're less expensive than the Derwent watercolor pencils. And all around for a pencil in its price range that also has light fast ratings on it, it really can't be beat. I love it so much. I've been working with them a lot more. I think this is one of the first watercolor pencils I ever used when I was a teenager. Now, my only sad downfall to this brand is here in the U.S. these are not as easy to find open stock. You can find some sets but it's a little bit more difficult to buy single colors if you fall in love with a certain color and you want to replace it. I think though if you are just starting with watercolor pencils this is a great starter pencil. You can find sets of them at Dick Blick and Amazon and look how vibrant they are. I love them. Okay so number six graphite sticks. These are like giant water soluble graphite crayons made by Pacific Arc. I have a bunch of the soft grade ones, the 2B, the 4B, the 6B, the 8B, the 10B, and the 12B. I have two sets of three. I can't even believe how fun these were to work with. They're chunky, they feel nice and high quality, and they wash out beautifully. These were super fun to play with in my sketchbook, and I just tried these for the first time this year. And if you follow me, then you know I love me some water-soluble products and I love to work with water-soluble graphite. These are going to be great for covering large areas, but I was also able to get some pretty fine detail, surprisingly, considering how chunky they are. And because they're so big, they are going to last me a very, very long time. Now, I bought these on Amazon, and I will link them along with all the other supplies in the description below. And if you want to see any of the videos related to this video, I will also have those linked as well, so you can have a more full view of each of these supplies because most of these have some sort of review on my channel already. But yeah, I was so excited with how dark I was able to get these, but how light I was able to wash them out. Such a great range of value and they are fairly inexpensive. Number five, aluminum artist panels. Now these babies, <laughs> these are paper by Legion. The Stonehenge Aqua, they have the regular Stonehenge. They have a bunch of varieties of their best papers. Mounted to an aluminum panel. So if you're somebody who loves to work on paper, but you want something sturdy for, you know, going out and painting in plain air, these would be amazing for that. I was so impressed with these. I was so excited when they came out with these. The edges are nice and rounded, so you're not gonna cut yourself. They're sturdy, but they're lighter weight than a hardboard or an MDF would be, and they're just beautiful. Now, I did a piece on the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press, and then I also did a piece with just colored pencil on there, regular Stonehenge, and both were beautiful. This one that you're seeing here was done on the cold press. It took the watercolor beautifully, and because I'm a mixed media artist, I wanted to see how well it would take colored pencil on top of the watercolor, and it took both beautifully. I'm using my Holbein watercolors with my Holbein colored pencils here and just layering up. I was super impressed. It didn't tear through the paper to, down to the aluminum. The edges were all nice and straight on there. Like there wasn't any paper hanging over. Just a high quality product. Very, very impressed. And I am looking forward to trying some of the others as well. But this one and the regular Stonehenge, beautiful. I love it. I cannot wait to use this more in the coming year. Number four is the Graphitin Pencils by Derwin. I love these pencils. We're getting back into the water-soluble graphite again, but these have just a little tint of color. I've used these on my channel a few times over the years, and it probably was on a list a few years ago like this, but it's an old favorite of mine, and I used it a little bit more again this year, and every time I use this product, I'm like, man, I have to use this more often. Look at those beautiful, subtle hues. It already, like, gives in some nice built-in nostalgia, and I love them 
for making these beautiful landscapes that almost look like a memory. This is probably one of my favorite pieces that I did this year. It's not very large, but it really shows the beauty in this product. These beautiful, subtle, almost earthy hues. Sadly, there are only 24 colors in the line. Maybe someday Darwin will come out with more. They also offer some pan sets, and I have those as well, though I do find that the pans aren't quite as colorful as the pencils. The pencils tend to be a little bit more vibrant, but both are a beautiful and versatile product. You really can't beat it. And I have tried other tinted graphite, but I always come back to the Derwent Graphitint because I find that it has the best color payout and it's just beautiful. An absolute favorite of mine for landscape. Okay, getting into the top three. Number three is the core watercolors. I have been falling back in watercolors this year, and one of the watercolors I've been using a lot of is the Core by Golden. They are so beautiful and wishy-washy. Now, this is not going to be my favorite watercolor of all time. I still lean towards my Holbein because I'm a control freak, and my Holbein allow me a lot of control. But I have been trying to lean more into the wishy-washy watercolors and letting things flow a little bit more. And I find that the core is perfect for that. They are luscious. They are able to be layered. They are able to be lifted. They have all the boxes checked as far as a good watercolor goes. Very high quality, beautiful, pigmented, and they have a pretty good range of light fast colors. So this is another supply that I've actually had for quite a few years, but I just recently put together a palette combining two sets that I had. And then they came out with some more colors. And of course, I recently just added a little bit more to my palette. And I'm pretty happy with it. I have a lot of warm colors in my palette, a lot of earthy colors, which is pretty fitting for me because I like to do a lot of nature themed things. The only thing that I'm kind of bummed about is I don't really have enough greens, but I'm pretty happy with it. And this is the piece that made me fall in love with them. Okay, number two, Tonic Watercolors. These are a beautiful, unique product made in St. Louis for St. Louis Art Supply. I have here the core mixing set of six, which is a split primary mixing set. It has the warm and the cool primaries. I also bought Carbon Black separately, and they come in these beautiful ceramic pans that hold seven times the amount of a standard half Pan watercolor. That is amazing. They are beautiful and vibrant. Every color in the line right now is highly light fast. They don't have a ton of colors out yet. This is a fairly new product, but I hear that they are going to be coming out with more down the line and they are all single pigment at this moment as well. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. You're getting a lot of paint. You're getting a lot of pigment payout. And I am just super excited about these. I ended up putting together my own palette with them. I bought a butcher tray palette and then I put my pans in there and I actually put little magnets on the bottom of my pans to kind of keep them from sliding around. And then I bought a reusable casserole dish cover so that I could keep them covered and keep dust out of it. That gave me plenty of mixing space and there's still room for me to add more on when I inevitably buy more colors when they come out. And this was my fun little piece that I did playing around with mixing the colors. Number one is the Museum Aquarelle Pencils by Karen Dash. These are another watercolor pencil, folks. I had a big year with watercolor pencils. These are beautiful. They are luscious. They're on the pricey side, but they have a lot of highly light fast colors in them. They wash out beautifully. They blend beautifully, dry and wet. And I was just super impressed with them. Now, as I mentioned before, I am a huge Inktense fan. These are not going to replace Inktense in my heart. I still love my beautiful, vibrant Inktense pencils, but these are definitely a close second as far as water-soluble colored pencils go. They are just fantastic. And Caran d'Ache has high quality products to begin with, so it's no surprise. But this was the product this year that I tried for the first time and I was like, wow, I love this. I immediately fell in love and so that's why I had to put it as my number one. And you can expect more watercolor pencil videos in 2025. I will link any of the videos related to these supplies in the description below.
All right, folks, that's the video. Those were my favorite supplies of 2024. Let us all know in the comments below if you have tried any of these supplies, if you like them, and let us know what your favorite supplies are as well. I love talking about different supplies in the comments with you. We all discover things from each other, and it's super exciting and fun. So let's get the conversation going. Let's talk about our favorite supplies, and I will see you next week. You have a fantastic day. Bye.